we're going to get spoilery now about an Apple TV Plus show. Oh, John. You what? just missed your moment. We're going to get physical. physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You set yourself up and then you just veered away from your moment. <laughs> set Shoot, the redo. stage. Let's Take your back. bow. Come yep. on, John. Yep. Live your spotlight. Uh, there's the rewind effect. Uh, <laughs> <this time>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could totally do that i'll just chop it out in the edit um, there you but, go there you go <laughs> <laughs> yes we're about to get physical with the television show so sad physical <laughs> <laughs> starring rose Byrne mm -hmm. on apple tv plus you've like we started this the same time but then you like blasted through it i did and, i um, did i blasted through it like an aerobic workout yeah um <laughs> 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 as you uh with your like kind of speed at which you'd um, move mm -hmm. through this i was like okay i better watch it too must be mm -hmm. good kind of thing um did you so you binged it pretty much i did you, i you did enjoyed the binge yes yes like our titular character um we already have our spoilers yeah. up so it will be a surprise to no one who has seen the show um yeah, it's a uh, it's a much darker show than I think I than I was initially expecting. Um, I was I was kind of expecting some like glitzy, bubblegummy, like you know maybe with a dark edge show about you know a woman who discovers aerobics. Um, yeah, you know she like the the uh, official description is like a repressed housewife discovers like her passion for aerobics and like you know kind of goes from there. Um, but, you know, we're introduced right away to the fact that our main character also suffers from uh, an eating disorder, an eating disorder. She binges and purges. Um, and that's apparent right off the bat um, that that's yeah. going to be a significant part of the show and the plot. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, if you're able to adapt to that, you know, kind of your expectations being subverted in that way. Um, I think yeah. this is a really cool show, but yeah, if you go in and you're kind of one of those, those people who's like, no, I had my expectations here, really don't like that they weren't met, then I'm sure this was, could be a tough show for you yeah. to get into. Yeah, it, uh, it definitely was surprising, but I kind of liked the direction they went and, mm -hmm. um, it gave the show more depth than I thought it might have mm -hmm. had initially. Um, I just was interested because of Rose Byrne and the yeah, her performance 80s is, aesthetic. Yeah. You know? Her performance is absolutely magnetic. I think she seals the show. Like if she if she wasn't the titular character, um, I think I would have had a much harder time getting into this because sure. she is one of those people and I mean the the ensemble cast does does a great job at this too, but she really does a great job of like Every time I'm to the brink of not liking her character, something happens that just pulls me back in enough. I'm like, oh, fine. I will give you another chance. <laughs> you, will, you will do another thing. I'm going to watch another episode. I don't know, though. Like, sometimes you're just awful. Yeah. I mean, that was something that surprised me. We're definitely not watching a show about good people or stable God, no. people. You no. know, and so it's amazing to see constantly how everyone is so damaged. Yes. Uh, you know, there's there's very few people that in, in this series that seem to like the one person I thought, hey, pretty cool and kind of has it together in his own way is the surfer dude. Tyler. Yeah. Tyler. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he we're introduced to his own problems later mm -hmm. and stuff he has to deal with. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, him in particular, but then also our main character, it's like impulse control. Mm -hmm. Like how many times do we hear in her head over and over, don't say this, don't say this, don't say this, and then say it. Or yep. stop, 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 and you just can't, you know? Yep. So the last time I'm doing like her whole binge ritual is yeah fascinating she said yeah. rose burn sells it so well but every time she says this is the last time and you just like feel that like visceral like god what am i doing it's not it's it's not even about sometimes you know like the the eating the binging 
Um, it's about like the money that she's spending. You can feel her yeah. being like, ah, I'm like broke. <laughs> Why am I yeah. doing like I'm my whole purpose right now is to make money and I just blew some money. Like, why would I do yeah. that? You know? Yeah. I and I, I liked the um the added depth later in the season where we get probably hints at where some of this might have started from. You know, yeah, like yeah. we never find out, we don't find out for a while, like we why meet her parents and yeah, it's like, why is she in such poor terms with her parents? What's going mm-hmm. on? Is it just because they didn't like her hippie, her hippie boyfriend and all that right. stuff? And then obviously it's a lot more than that. We have, you know, right. her being molested by a father's friend and then they right. don't believe her. Mm-hmm. And so. Which, you know, for the, for the time period that this is set in is, is not uncommon you know, that they, that they would have been like, let's sweep this under the rug instead of like, let's. Well, and that's what I was wondering. Do you think like, is it a sweep under the rug or is it like a, we didn't believe you? Like, which, yeah, the, I mean. The show isn't clear about that, which I think gives us some place to go in season two. Cause I imagine, yeah. I mean, season two is greenlit. I imagine we're going to be seeing her parents again, especially that considering the fact that they gave her the money and expected to see their granddaughter and she was like screw you and that was another that was a great moment because i really didn't know what way i wanted that to go Mm. you know what i mean like on the one hand they did the thing they clearly want to see their granddaughter and i felt bad for them and then on the other hand i didn't feel bad for them at all because they clearly treated their daughter terribly right and you know like either didn't believe her that this this happened because of course we see it through her like fantasy of how she's gonna you know tell them them. all these things yeah Yeah. confront them and tell them all the things that is on her mind so it's hard to know like what exactly happened but yeah they either didn't believe her or they wanted to sweep it under the rug and just be like let's not talk about it ever um but either way it goes like that doesn't either one isn't better than the other it's still terrible either way it happened so yeah yeah uh, yeah, so that was good. Um, I really was disappointed though with the knocking over a few flower pots versus yeah. like what was in her in her You're head. Like that she's big revenge. Do. Yeah, it's like oh, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> Just yes. do that. So I was I wasn't sure. Did they keep the money then? They did. They did. Okay, that was a thing. I I didn't yes. remember because I know he was her husband was gonna tear it up. And she stopped him and then yes. we never saw them like cash it or whatever. Yeah. So I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that they kept it, but I guess, yeah, you're right. We don't have that totally confirmed. I mean, you'd think I would have thought they would have made it clear in one way or another, finish up showing, tear up the check. Right. Or, or, or like write it in the book or something, you know? Right. Something, but maybe we'll, see that later because shortly thereafter isn't that when they they got all their money from the bootleg tapes yes right mm-hmm. then they their money stuff was was, was fixed solved for, ish yeah, yeah for a while mm-hmm. <laughs> right um let's see some other notes i took uh her husband is really a dork uh um, yeah that is definitely <laughs> it's definitely a dork Yeah, it's so funny. We're we're introduced to him as this like very confident in himself, you know, professor. Um, and you know, like they were introduced in the in the entire series to all of these characters, and he's trying, you know, he convinces Rose Byrne, Sheila, his wife, um, right away. He's like, Yeah, my students over here, we're gonna have a threesome. Like, you're gonna do this for me, baby, because you know, he clearly doesn't know about her self-esteem issues but right. is so used to just like automatically taking advantage of them and like convincing her to do whatever he wants it's just like yeah this happens like i have the power i'm good and it's not until like the series keeps progressing that we realize like just what a doofus and what like a forgive my language but what like a fuck up he is you know he just can't mm-hmm. figure his own stuff out he has none of his own ideas you know, yep. he, like, especially in, in this, like, you know, series of like setting up his firing and his campaign, like 
Rose Byrne is just like the force behind all of it. And maybe he used to have all these great ideas. And maybe he used to be this firebrand and this great speaker. And that's why everybody was so attracted to him. But he hasn't kept it. He hasn't kept it at all. Well, I read it as like he is uh, he's personable and charismatic. I mean, that he's able to be at school and to attract the young students and some mm -hmm. of that, you know, he just isn't particularly smart. He doesn't he doesn't right. have the ideas. He's not very bright, you know, right. but but he is he is but charismatic he, like, and a little magnetic. And he like, thinks people. he's bright is the thing. Yeah. Like right. he clearly thinks he's one of the great thinkers like, <laughs> yeah. Well, but like every time you see him have this like really great idea, he's either quoting somebody else or like, you know, like when he writes like, oh, I found the perfect line to use in my speech from, you know, or, you know, he's directly stealing Rose Byrne's idea. I'm sorry. I have a really hard time calling her her character. Yeah, I pulled up the I pulled up the list of names now because I don't Sheila Rubin. Really, so. um, but he but he directly takes from her without acknowledging that it's hers. So he, yeah, you're right. He's got the delivery. He's got the likable, affable, like, you know, he's, you know, he just kind of want to like help him along because he's such a doofus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's not a great thinker. And he, he goes back and forth between like, man, you're so ungrateful to then being very, you know, turning on the charm in a way, you yes. know, so like we mm -hmm. see when he tries to, when he talks to, uh, Simone and, mm -hmm. uh, and then gets, you know, discovered by their daughter. Cause I was, Oof. I was wondering, right. But I was like, where is she now? I like, are you really, I she's getting left. Behind it's hilarious. I thought here. that too. I was like, Oh boy, where, is, yeah. where did she go? And then, yeah, yeah. there she mm -hmm. is. And, uh, you know, other times like, they really you really know, are shit. How much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they might not Here. be shit in the way that like Sheila's parents are, but they're definitely like mm -hmm. just neglectful, forgetful, like, right. We have a daughter. Oh crap. Here, have all this, uh, this, this fast food right now while right. I go and right. like, eat all mine and shower. Right. And Please everything. like go like, entertain yourself in a corner while we do our thing. Like, yeah. Now that you yep. have to spend 24 seven with your kids. Cause I certainly don't like, you know, mm -hmm. Everett has her own like play area where sometimes I sit her down, but it's it's not like this level of <laughs> yeah, go be in a corner while I do my stuff. Mm -hmm. So and then and then he has moments where he says, like, you know, really, you are the driving force. You know, you mm -hmm. came up with, you know, this one you had the spark. You went up without any of this without you. You got me all this right. stuff, you know, but then turn around and yeah, like she's had internal monologue parts like, are you going to let jerry talked to me this way you know right and like clearly you know he's getting a little too involved in their relationship um, right that kind of thing yeah it's so. very um it's very i think textbook emotional manipulation you know like mm -hmm. you're you're mean enough to somebody just until the point where you see that they're like breaking or they're gonna leave you or they're gonna do something and then you're like oh i'm so sorry like mm -hmm. you're so great i totally forgot like you know i lost sight please forgive me oh yep. i got you back now i can treat you how i want you yep i mean the lesson in this show definitely it's the through line to me for the varying couples mm -hmm. here is just stop lying yes just be honest like people yes. need you know all this stuff like uh sheila years not confessing that she has an eating disorder right you know or that she is unhappy with any sort of aspect of her life you know like just mm -hmm. quiet and then between greta and ernie um the uh wealthier couple and some of that like they're weird Fetishes. What a weird happy ending they get, though. <laughs> I know. Yes, it is. It is nice, but it's like all these years, all yes. this stress, all, all the, the misery. Like, you think, uh, right? You think that you know you're you're growing further apart. You think he's cheating on you. All this stuff, yeah. like just like talking to each other and like being open about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, let's see the uh, to see John Bream and uh his wife what's so right. the other guy like, is so interesting we don't even like know her we're like yeah john bream and wife yeah because <laughs> she is she's such like she's just like wife she's like totally subsumed herself into like i'm your wife 
I'm sure we'll find like she's got to we'll, have something. I she'll hope have in something two. more. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, the one thing I do like about the show is everybody has something interesting. Like even our, mm -hmm. you know, like you were just talking about Greta and Ernie, um, and they're like our side supporting characters clearly. And yep. even Greta like starts out and she just seems like she's going to be, you just know, Sheila's best friend, mom. comedic mom. Like she's going to be the butt of the joke while also yep. like wanting to be like Sheila so much that she's just going to support her and whatever she does. She turns out to be interesting. She turns out to be like a strong person once she just kind of like figures her stuff out. Yeah. Um. You know, and and she like confronts her husband and she's like, listen, you know, she could she could have been that kind of person who's like, I found out your fetish, which actually weirdly turns out to be a good thing because I'm willing to go into it and like reconnect with you. And now our marriage is amazing. Yeah. But like if she was truly just like the butt of the joke and the comedic relief and the sidekick best friend, you could easily see her like shrinking away and being like, oh, no, this is too terrible for me. Like you mm -hmm. sicko. Like, how could you do that? And that would make her less interesting of a person. Yep. But because she like faces up to it, she's interesting. Yep. And Bunny has family issues. Oh, you know, I love really trying Bunny's to create line. like a persona for herself here. Mm -hmm. And her like sisters mad at her for like being gone and some of that. And so yeah, they've got a whole more family to, that yeah. she and she's supposed to like follow a whole path and just clearly didn't, but like sleeps in a van with her surfer boyfriend, mm -hmm. runs her aerobic studio. Yeah, I loved her whole weird like like sort of weird Jewish mafia type. Back. You know what I mean? It was like all secretive and like regimented yeah. and like I had no idea what was going on. But I loved it. I, I like I'm so intrigued by her family and who they are and like what mm -hmm. if they're super important people. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Um. Let's see what other notes. Um. I actually do have to say I wasn't really in love with like giving Tyler a like a backstory moment like her boyfriend surfer guy and now he's got like you know issues where he can't go surf again you sure. know he's got like the ear th i was like was like you it's it, it's the storyline served to like underscore the like everybody has impulse control issues and like sort of un underscore like our main characters impulse control but i sort of was like i could have just left tyler he's kind of the one the one guy I could have just been like, he's like random surfer dude. I love that he's super obsessed with making a video and how excited he is about like, yes. I made this like killer video, man. Great. Love it. I mm -hmm. did not need him to be complicated beyond that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. He, he would have worked out well. There's kind of always be that one positive thing. Yep. You know, yep. we didn't need to see him eat an entire pot churro and then no. spend too much on a board and a lot of stuff, you know, like right. And like get the board smashed and like that yep. needed to be at the, like, no, it didn't. I mean, I, again, like him choosing to surf and like going into the hospital and now bunny has, you know, money problems because they need to pay for his hospital bills. Sure. Like you could serve the storyline that way. Um, but it could have been anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just I didn't need him to have a backstory. He could that have just broken something while right. surfing. And right. uh, you know, that was the one thing I thought like could have cu been cut out for somebody else's extra time. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, because it can get to be, you know, it, certain shows it, it. I'm OK with it almost always being dark, I guess, mm -hmm. but it, it can get a little bit sometimes when you don't have someone to kind of bright to grasp yes. onto like yes. everyone is emotionally complicated everyone in their own right isn't a good person or something or is mm -hmm. doing something very wrong you know and mm -hmm. so yeah he was a kind of a bright spot yep. of just of just fun and kind of that good thing that always have the support for bunny you know uh it's yeah. always gonna be there for her, she clearly so. needs it you know what i mean yeah. like she's she's the chaotic character who like needs her rock and he needs to be her rock and it, mm -hmm. like I said, it's great that he's in jeopardy because that I think is going to fuel some interesting stuff for her in terms of the second season and like needing money and 
making sure Sheila doesn't just like leave her behind. That's great. That's going to fuel some desperation and some interesting things. But yeah, Tyler can just be like surfer dude Tyler. Yep. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, also, I could take less Simone. <laughs> okay, she's on screen. Since take she, since she's on the screen. I was like, she has served her purpose. Like, she's, you know, hot young co-ed who's moving in on Sheila's husband, tempting, you know, idealistic young protege that he's like, oh, I'm like recapturing my glory days. Yeah. Great I, job. You served your purpose. I'm I don't cool think she's going it. anywhere because I, I mean, know, but I wish she was the very first time when basically uh, John and Sheila interacted in the mall. Yeah. I'm like, ah, OK, so they're going to have a thing. Yeah. And um, I was waiting I for when that's going to happen. Same, same. And, and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't yeah. envision it. The way that it worked way, right. out. Exactly. As it says, like, <laughs> I didn't expect that. I <laughs> Yes. Great job, show. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, you know, we're going to have this here and we're seeing um, her husband at the end really like always, always leaving me again. She's disappeared mm -hmm. again. She's run off, you know, my big right. moment or whatever. And um, so he's going to be looking for someone else to to go to and well Simone will be there I'm sure right it, well yes. especially because they had a little interruptus of their uh of their non-coitus um <laughs> coitus yeah. interruptus exactly exactly <laughs> way to just stroll in neglected daughter um yeah I I do imagine that that storyline is going to work itself out in some fashion and she's not going to be completely gone in season two but like i said i i could take a, like a stepping back and maybe maybe the unexpected with um jeff's storyline is that you know he he finds something new to focus his energies on that isn't just like i'm gonna make myself feel better by having sex with like my young student you know what i mean like he, oh, spoiler danny? alert oh yo danny, danny yeah sorry yeah. I keep I keep wanting to call him Jeff for some reason. Um, so Danny, yeah, Danny is gonna, you know, he lost the election. Spoiler alert! You know, the whole thing we've been working to this entire season, like he yep. got fired. He wanted to run for a local office, lost spectacularly. Um, he's obviously gonna need something new in season two to focus his energies on. I would love it if we could quickly move on from the cliche of "I will make myself feel better by sleeping with my student." Okay. I mean, I feel like they could go either he totally falls apart, you know, because yeah. I'm sure we'll have Sheila like rising to success and it will be, you know, the question of is she leaving her surfer friends behind? Is she leaving right. Bonnie and Tyler right. behind? Or like how is that how is that working? And it's obviously not gonna be like you know what I mean? She's not just gonna leave them. So, yeah, I don't know, because she can't you know, like she'll try. I think she's well, definitely that kind of person that would try, even though she was like, I'll be there for you. I'll stand by you guys. She yeah. had that like really great, like inspiring speech moment and then was just like, I got to go. But then she was saying, like, in her head, she can see right through me. She knows, you know, yes. she yep. she's, has my number, basically. Right. Um, which my comment towards the end of the show was. It's time for some character growth. Yeah, you know? she ha she's had some steps. Like I said, there's there's so many episodes where I'm like, oh, why? And then she has that one moment of like, fine, it's just enough. It's just yeah. enough for you. Yeah. You're right, though. I she does need to move forward in like some meaningful way mm -hmm. and not and not take like a huge regressive step back. Yeah, because I mean, the thing is, the is she's done like just stealing her friend's camcorder yeah just like spur them like they'll never what? miss it <laughs> yeah um i don't know it's um i get probably the idea that we don't want to like oh she's over her eating disorder you know i want to make right. that be a light issue so right. you want to you want to use that for a long time mm -hmm. um but think about 
a movie and the character growth someone potentially has to go through in the span of two and a half hours, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously it's different when you have a TV show, you don't have to write that way, but right. for our attention spans and for the way that, you know, we want to consume something that pacing becomes more important, right. you know, when people are going to shift and change, like the shift and change for Ernie and Greta. Great. It happened. You know, yeah. Right. You know, that, that resolution, that's really nice. It's a good timing for that. Mm -hmm. We got to see some other people like grow as people or learn from their mistakes, change their course of action. You know, like mm -hmm. would, would, uh, is, you know, would Sheila at this point really like how bad of a person is she that she just wants to drop bunny and Tyler mm -hmm. like that? It might not be able to, but that's her intent. Right. If that's like, that's really mean. Like, let's make this mm -hmm. work. Let's write up a contract. We did this together. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. Like, and all the things Tyler's contributed. Like, we're a team. Right. Like, right. If she just tries yeah. to drop them, that's really, she hasn't learned anything uh, and has right. not grown to be a person that can like relate and talk to people at all. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I get that the show, comes from a place of like Sheila is doing this not just because like she doesn't like these people but because she loves that like the attention is on her and she feels special you know because her husband obviously doesn't make her feel special or valuable in any way and mm -hmm. so it's like a heady drug of like oh my god right. these people think I'm amazing yep so we can we can I think in season two see some temptation but you're right we ultimately need to see her say like thank you super flattered but i need my partners to come along for at least some piece of the ride here right and i can't just leave them in the dust yep yeah well that's what i first thought when he when the guy from the ad agency the talent agency and video producing and all that stuff mm -hmm. came and had the meeting with her right i thought she was gonna okay meet me in the food court in 10 because she, she'd go get bunny and right. I think that's why they intentionally brought it. So they, before that she ran into bunny and right. talked, and then she did not invite her to yep. the business meeting. Yep. Um, so right there, I'm like, well, that's a mistake. Yep. Um, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's also easy to see from the, the way this series has progressed. Like Sheila does have really great ideas, especially when it comes to like yeah. growing bunnies business and like growing the aerobics arena. Like mm -hmm. she, once she finds her rhythm, she's obviously like a natural born teacher. She loves the routine. She loves all of it. She has the passion, but that still doesn't mean like you get a free pass to leave out these people who basically helped you do the things that were in your head, but you couldn't get done. You know what I yep. mean? Like she couldn't make a video without Tyler. She couldn't teach a class and develop all these routines without using Bunny studio. Yep. So yeah. Yep. And they showed obviously when they were like working on things that she was now coming up with more new ideas than Bunny. Right. Bunny right. was starting to like follow her moves and stuff of like that. So right. that's fine, but you still, you know, yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. So, and so one thing I we so we obviously we're following Sheila. So we get we know mm -hmm. intimately why they're having the marriage problems that they're having and all this stuff. <laughs> and then at the end, we get to see, um, you know, again, the coming together of John here and Sheila. That's quite uh, literal. Let's be at the mall. Choice yeah. of you. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, well, you know, and again, the interesting thing is, like, does it show her, like, narcissism? Like, you just said, wanting to be, feel special? Because yes. literally as she's looking at him, and they're doing this together, we see in her head, she's just thinking about herself. Yes. In like, it absolutely <laughs> is narcissism. Absolutely. Yeah. Which, which uh, I kind of weirdly loved um you know i mean we, we talk about like her character needs to grow and she does i absolutely agree i think it's i think it's in the way of she needs to you know include bunny and tyler she doesn't necessarily need to grow out of her narcissism right away um because i think that's what makes this moment so interesting in 
you know, like right away when we meet Bream and they have their like first interaction and we're thinking like, yeah, they're go they're going to get together. They're going to have an affair. Something's going to happen. You can feel it already. And I love that this show does it, but doesn't do what you'd expect. There's no like actual contact between these two characters. There's no like yeah. because they don't really have a connection. They they're not really like the same people. They're not like meeting each other in a place of like, oh, my life is dark and lonely and I need you yeah. because we have this like beautiful emotional. No, they don't have a story. It's just like a passion. Kind of yeah, it's just like oh, what I have is thing. yeah, what I have is not working for me and I need something mm -hmm. else. And you're just like an outlet. But it could be anybody. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be you. Maybe but they've I need, kind of had their back and need, forth, you know. Yeah, they've had like their little conversations, and maybe this could grow into something. But right now, I'm glad that the show didn't make them like kiss sure. or yeah, 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 be intimate with one another. That doesn't yeah. feel true to who they are right now. Right now, they're just looking for the release, mm -hmm. and they're finding it with this person who's starting to be something interesting to them, but isn't like, it isn't emotional yet. Yep. Could be, I, but not yet. And that's what I was going to say. I, I want to know, because we know so well Sheila's situation. I want to know more with John and I think Maria. Yeah. Um, Maria? Yeah, Maria Green. Okay. Green. Because there, I can see Sheila recognizing and being drawn to uh, a togetherness, a cleanness, mm -hmm. uh, a uh, intelligence of John. Yeah. And so that's so starkly contradicting her husband. Yeah. You know, that's sort of like extra, you know, like disheveled at times, sticking with the hippie vibe and like doesn't let himself have a, go. Original thought in his mind, you know? All like that he's, kind of thing. he's got some like dad bod. A little softer. You know, yeah. Little, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she talks about like he has food crumbs. He's like messy and gross. Yeah. 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 I think, I think what I like about these two people being paired together is everything about their lives is so opposite. Like mm -hmm. her life is with this, me like you're saying like this messy, like over his prime, you know, hippie dude daughter who like, she doesn't really like, who doesn't really listen to her. Um, you know, she gets no respect at home and she hates everything about it. And here's like John Bream, who seemingly has like perfect everything, like a wife who's like, I will service you and I am here for you, my husband. And, you know, I will do what you need. And kids were like, Dad, you're my hero. You're the best. And he's like, "Ugh, like, stop <laughs> kissing my ass. Like, you just like feel his total disdain for his son, who's like, you're the best thing ever. And he's like, shut up. So they have these really two opposite situations that they're both trying to like get out of mm -hmm. and neither one is like ideal. It's not ideal to either have like this fully supportive, like you can do no wrong, but it's also not ideal to have this totally chaotic, unsupportive, kind of nasty at times, unappreciative family. So they feel they like they need to like meet somewhere in the middle. Well, they seem like they would work better with the swap. Exactly. Doing, yeah. Doing the wife swap here because he exactly. wants someone that's gonna just like support and and dote on him and like be right. there all the time. Like what what he probably kids John were like, you're amazing. Maggie, but yeah. she's there, you know. So that perfect for um Danny. And yeah. he was probably like, I want someone that's a little more independent and you know a little sharper. Right. And she's Some the same. Want someone that's, yeah. Right. So it's just like. They feel like if they just switched, yep. they'd be happy. Like you say, neither one probably particularly healthy or balanced exactly. It should be some sort of balance. Right. But it would, but it's more what each other are would, looking for. Right. Well, and you might achieve that balance if you could like <laughs> yeah, maybe. swap a little bit, do a little wife swap or family swap something, you know, yeah. just to like meet somewhere in the middle of like. Don't don't be unappreciative, but don't be so supportive that you're like blind and subsumed into another person. Yep. Yep. I, the one thing that didn't quite fall in line with that narrative for me was that mm. all of a sudden I got a different idea. Like, that's why I wanted to delve a little more into like John and Maria's relationship, because sure. it seemed like the kind of doting, very like whatever you need kind of thing. But then there was a few moments where like 
therapy didn't go the way she wanted. And then it was mm. like, I will like sort of passively aggressively get a waterbed. It's like, I know you're not over this. So I'm going to get, going to get the most watery waterbed. Oh can my God. Find. I know. I know. So I was just a little in, confused by, it seemed like a right. shift in what the, the kind of narrative they were trying to sell. me. Right. First. In the guise of, I am trying to help you. I will yeah. actually punish you in some fashion. Yeah. 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 No, I totally agree. Um, but I mean, that's clearly not what he wants either. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 very weird. Like the dynamics there are very weird. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And hopefully we'll be we'll be seeing a lot more of of their family to yeah. also figure out, like, what is his trauma in the first place? Because this is. Yeah. So, you know, swimming like is something an event with his dad or something. A right. Boating thing. Uh, something like right. that. I don't I don't quite remember the specifics, um, but yeah, cl clearly something that, you know, they're going to have to bring up at some point because now they've made an issue out of, oh, my God, mm -hmm. he was in the pool. Now we're getting a waterbed to fix this. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it sounded like his dad must have died in a boating accident or something. Right. He and, and he used to swim really far all, you know, in the right. lake and all, all stuff. So, right. And so but, he must have either been there or like tried to go right. out there or, you know, something. Yeah traumatic yeah yep um these everybody also needs better friends <laughs> like no <laughs> one has good friends I mean, they go and they're gonna do firstly they the only reason they call up these friends from there is is because they want to have a fundraiser so we need money yeah and then yeah they go out to their fancy and the only reason they invite them out is so they can show off everything Right. Oh, look at all the things I've achieved. Look at the I'm look pregnant. at our view here. Yeah, yeah. Like just like all this stuff. And then the other friends coming to the party too are like just they want to rub everything in everyone's faces. And there's no no good friends. No. Right? No. I mean, obviously, uh Greta and Ernie turn out to be decent friends. Yes. yes. You know, and and fairly mm -hmm. forgiving on Greta's part for, you know, what Sheila's done. Um, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah, no, they have, they have some shit friends. I mean, I guess Simone's a good friend other than trying to have <laughs> sleep with a married man. Oh. But, but we set the season up as like their, you know, free love, man. Um, yeah, kind of right. thing. So I don't well, know. And I even, think, even you know. she at times is very like, you know, Danny is like not even really needed for this campaign. Like it's her campaign almost, you know, yeah. when she starts like getting the organizers going together and she's like, Shh, we don't need you. Um, well, the sympathy that she has also, which tries bringing up, maybe your wife has an eating disorder. Right. And then he's like, ah, oh, you know, just like anyone else, you know, kind of thing or something. Right. Right. So. Yeah. That, that was actually like a cool moment of her to be like, listen, you know, you might want to, you might want to figure this out because yeah. I noticed. Um, so that was, that was, that was kind of a redeeming instant for her character. And then it's like, yeah, but okay. <laughs> Still trying to sleep with, uh, with Danny over here with your professor. Um, and also speaking of shit friends, we haven't talked about their campaign manager. Yeah. Only in passing boy. He is a, he is something. He is something. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, boy. I mean, he, you know, he's obviously the one that like sets a lot of things in motion because he, yeah. he drives Danny to be even worse than he already is to Sheila. Um, you know, he gets obviously his hopes up about all these things that can happen once he's elected and they don't really come to pass. He doesn't really seem to be working very hard as the campaign manager, just kind of like riding out. Like I get a place to crash and some beers yeah. and, Maybe I write a few campaign slogans and we we sit around and smoke pot and like philosophize, but like we're yeah. not, you know, doing anything. And then yeah. obviously he's the one who like figures out the cooked books that she yeah. has been keeping. It's like, oh, you should leave those behind. Oof, you yeah. Not leave those behind Girl, big unlocked. mistake. Mm -hmm. Oh God. And it's such like a typical he like uses it to punish her so hard too. Yep. Ugh, ugh. you know even though i don't like <laughs> sheila it's just it's hard to watch her be so mm -hmm. like i did the wrong thing you know 
Like I can't mm-hmm. say anything now because I made this one slip up where you know I I missed well, it. But it's it's like years of slip up though. It's I, years you know, of yeah. I can't. And that's right. again the whole thing. These people just don't they, keep it, the relationships keep it are all based years, on yeah. lies, you know. Well, yeah, that's it's the crazy thing because yeah, you're right. Like she obviously didn't just like blow all their money in like one ill fated. Mm-hmm. You know, I made an investment and it didn't work out. It was years of like mismanagement or you know lying to herself mm-hmm. about you know my my addiction really isn't that bad. Um, but when we see it, it's sort of just like the singular thing juxtaposed against all the yeah. other ways that she's helped him and, yeah. all, and we see all the other tiny little terrible things and terrible um treatment of her by danny and we're like it's one mistake and she just acts like she has so much to you know atone for mm-hmm. and we're and i don't know for me as the viewer i was definitely like where's danny's comeuppance where's danny's <laughs> Like, I'm sorry I treated you terribly, even though you came up with, like, my campaign slogans and, oh, man. Yeah. Well, and see, that's what he gets away with, I guess, because he's just stupid. He's just so, you yeah, know? he's just so How bumbling. Much and, because it's like, yeah. you know, if you think about, like, what is his his sin, it's really just being stupid and ungrateful. Right. Like, he's just not intelligent. So everything, he has to be, always be encouraged. He always has to be talked right. up. He always, right. you know, he's just kind of pathetic. And so that's his sin. He's a pathetic person. Um, right. So you and, automatically sort of feel sorry for him. He, he's automatically like a kicked puppy dog. Yeah. You're like, oh, right. are you right? I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> right. So I don't know. But either way, I, I definitely enjoyed the show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was best for me to binge it in the way I did, you know. Um, sure. Sure. You know, maybe I would have uh, felt less need for character growth or something if I just had a little more space between each episode or something like sure. that. But yeah, um, I mean, I, I did. I obviously did the same thing. I just like binged the show because once I started, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm hooked enough to to keep watching. But I don't know. I I feel almost kind of, and I hope it's not too terrible to say, but I almost feel like the show deserves like a binge because you almost feel, you know, like, like the main character's problem is binging and everybody's problem is impulse control. It's kind of a weird synonymous feeling of like, Ooh, should I really watch the show that way? Sure. You know, where's my impulse control? You know, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of a weird, interesting phenomena to have binged it. Gotta watch season two, binge it with pot churros. Pot churros. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if you're gonna have some edibles, if you're gonna have some edible baked goods, churros don't sound too bad. I know. I've never heard of that, but it's like, oh, I'm intrigued by that. I love churros, so yeah. you know. Yeah. Maybe. So. All right. Well, anything else to say on this show on physical? Um, not really. I would just, you know, I would just say I'm looking forward to season two. I think, you know. Apple recognizes what they have in already, you know, green lighting a second season. Um, I think it's out in June. Yeah, I think I think it's yeah coming out in not too long. And yeah, Rose Byrne is amazing in this um, way to excellently cast the lead character. I think she's got a good supporting cast, even though, you know, I don't really know much of the actors um, from anything else, but. Who, whoever did the casting, great job. I'm really intrigued for season two. 